When I first started test driving cars, Porsche had just introduced the Boxster. At that point, it was only their second model to accompany the famed 911. But since then, there has been a product blitz consisting of another two-seater, a four-door car, and two SUVs available in a multitude of configurations. And now it's time for the first all-electric Porsche, a new breed of sports car that preserves the brand's DNA. If you've ever driven an EV, then you know they're all kind of like sports cars in training. Low center of gravity, rocket-like thrust. These foundational elements are inherent to electric car construction. So for Porsche, the challenge with the Taycan isn't to make it sporty, it's to make it drive like a Porsche. Characteristics such as surgically precise steering, race car worthy brake modulation, and a highly elastic powertrain consecrate Porsche models as some of the most desirable in the world. As for speed, well that's just de rigueur for this automotive set. But with this Taycan, it's the rate at which its battery charges that's most impressive not as much its acceleration. With a launch controlled 0 to 60 time of 5.1 seconds, the Taycan's certainly not a slug, but fast charging from 5% to 80% in about 22 minutes? Now that's some serious speed, and the 800 volt battery architecture deserves the credit. For those of you always asking why I never test the base model, well, here you go. This is the least expensive Taycan, a single motor rear wheel drive model with a base price of $88,150. But no one ever leaves their Porsche dealership without embellishing their vehicle, right? And this one has two pages of optional equipment. The priciest and most important being the 93.4 kilowatt hour performance battery plus. For nearly $6,000, it adds an additional 25 miles of driving range. It pushes the horsepower from 402 to 469 and increases that torque from 254 pound feet to 263. But it's no faster to 60 miles per hour, and it will take a little longer to charge when plugged into a level two. With free over the air updates, Porsche continues to increase the car's driving range, and I've seen up to 265 miles on the battery monitor following a fill up. It's also plug in charge compatible, so as soon as the Taycan is plugged in, charging begins without any further hassle. Porsche includes three years of 30-minute charging sessions at Electrify America stations with purchase. But according to the company, most owners already have a 240-volt charger installed at home for convenient overnight battery replenishment. Interestingly, the Taycan has dual charge ports, one on the driver's side for DC charging and one on the passenger side for AC charging. Other distinguishing Taycan traits include massive regen braking capability, harvesting otherwise lost energy for reuse, not one but a two-speed transmission, green lighting repeatable high-performance driving without overtaxing the battery, and slithery aerodynamics that are better than any other Porsche. Even after two years on the market, this cherry metallic example is turning lots of heads. It's a beautiful machine, and these optional 20-inch turbo aero wheels fitted with staggered width max performance summer use tires tuned for EV use offer a strong hint at the Taycan's sporting intentions. For me, the highlight of the Taycan's drive is the superb steering. The wheel is right out of the 911, so it has that perfectly sized thin rim encased in suede, and it's the conduit to super quick directional changes with a tremendous amount of feedback. Add in the active suspension and rear wheel steering, and the Taycan is every bit the handling tactician without any unwanted rear wheel drive antics. Now, I've mostly been enjoying the driving experience without the manufactured sounds turned on, but if you prefer a pretty cool EV soundtrack, that is only a button push away. And the braking on this car is hands down the best that I have ever tested in an EV. You can actually feel when that second gear kicks in during sport and sport plus driving. At times, it isn't the smoothest transition of power, but despite this being the slowest Taycan in the 10 trim lineup, this two-speed transmission adds a performance twist by multiplying torque in such a way that doesn't throttle the driver's repeated demands. 
riding on air springs that automatically adapt to the road surface, the ride quality is beyond reproach and unmistakably Porsche, imbued with feeling, but never harsh. This also includes a smart lift function that can be programmed to remember when to lift the body so as not to bottom out. There's not much ground clearance here. And though Porsche doesn't do one pedal driving as commonly found in other EVs, deeming it too much of a performance sacrifice, with recuperation turned on, there is some significant braking induced by simply lifting off of the accelerator. With the weight savings of a single motor and the benefit of torque vectoring, the Taycan hunkers down and tames curvy roads with a sure-footed skillfulness that remind me of the company's acclaimed two-seaters. It's adhered to the road. And I'm surprised by how much is heard from outside the car, far beyond the ethereal pedestrian safety sounds typical to EVs. It's actually a bit racy. When viewed through the lens of a pure Porsche performance buyer who desires a base Taycan, I can kind of understand the unadorned nature of this cabin. And though there's plenty of features built in, it just doesn't resonate with the charisma and richness I'd expect in a four-door of this ilk. It's just a little too down market for me at this price. Which, as tested, is $120,900 by 2023 model year pricing. So, with over $30,000 in optional equipment, I expect a more elevated cabin experience. For example, this pricey and grippy Racetech's interior does a fine job of holding passengers in place, but looks like it's right out of a low-level Nissan. Over here, owners can opt for another screen for the co-pilot, but without it, there's just the sea of unimaginative black. Ergonomically speaking, the start button classically resides on the left, but it, the shifter, and the far right and left instrument pods are completely or partially obscured by the steering wheel. On the plus side, the Taycan doesn't require the driver to actually start the car. When the key fob is recognized, it's already on and ready to go. The new infotainment system mimics a smartphone screen and requires only a small learning curve, but doesn't put enough EV-specific features front and center. A visual driving range with map overlay would be nice. And the stock stereo sounds embarrassingly bad. The little screen down below is used for climate controls, opening the two trunks, and monitoring charging progress. There's also a new app to control such things. A wireless charge pad sits vertically inside the small center console. Low slung and compact sized, the Taycan may share some styling cues with the five-door Panamera, but it's actually much smaller inside. The two rear seats are positioned with deep bottoms and sculpted to hold its occupants, while three across seating is an option. There are two USB ports back here, but no heated seats nor electronic climate controls. Space is more than adult adequate, though, and quite comfortable, even without a panoramic roof. As for the main trunk, its 12 cubic feet of cargo volume is about the same as the Chevy Sparks. There's a little more room up front. This base model is the only two-wheel drive Taycan, and that likely speaks to some Porsche enthusiasts who need an ultimate speed when their 911 is awaiting back in the garage. For me, I might need at least the Taycan 4S and its sub 4 second acceleration to really get me excited. But I do like what Porsche has created here, minus the common folk cabin. For TopSpeed.com, I'm Steve Hammes.